Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are honing Scott's 258 engine. And right now I have a set of rough stones in. <clears throat> and uh, I'm getting the bores kind of close. I left five thousandths on because I wasn't sure how good or bad the pistons were going to be. So I've got to get the final five out. I'm taking about four out with the rough stones and then doing the final one thousandth with the fine stones. Um, now we've got to go over some, some numbers here because th th this was kind of crazy. I got a set of uh, silver light pistons in, 60 over, and there was five pistons in the box. There was not six. So my other favorite brand is Sealed Power. And I've got some sealed power pistons here now. And they look exactly the same as a silver light. You see that okay? They mm -hmm. look exactly the same. Uh, so, um, silver light's made in Mexico, uh, sealed power's made in India. The only reason you don't see me using sealed uh, power a lot is because they're, they're harder to get than um, silver lights. But I, it's, it's a good piston. I, I like this one. But we've got to go over some numbers. I was kind of shocked at, uh, at, at what Sealed Power did on these. Uh, I'm going to get a pad here. Hang on. <clears throat> okay, guys, we started out with uh, Scott's engine. Uh, standard bore on 258 is 3 inch 750. A 60 over bore is going to bring you to 3 inch 8 10 and that should be your final dimension I bored this block uh, 5 thousandths less so it's 3 805 is what we're starting with right now <clears throat> the pistons from sealed power are supposed to measure 3 inch 808 and 3 quarters uh, I took them out of the box they weren't fit now, now the finished like I say, the finished bore should be 3 inch 810. That's standard. Um, the pistons, when I took them out of the box, are 3 inch 810. That's the actual size of the piston. So my bore now has to be 3 inch 812 and 4 tenths. So instead of taking 5 over, I got to go 7 and 4 tenths over. Uh, it, it's very, very strange that they missed that big on the pistons. And. Uh, the good thing I guess is they got them all the same they're all 3 inch 810 uh, and that's not how bores are supposed to finish out and, and I don't know why that is but um, that's just how it is to get to get our piston clearance uh, we need 3 inch 812 and 4 tenths <clears throat> um, yeah let me let me get set up I'll, I'll show you the first bore that I did I'll show, try and show you what how far over we are Okay hey guys, I'm going to try and show you the finished bore on number one. Now this is set at, on zero, it would be 3 inch 810. You could see I'm um, 812, uh, 3 and a half, 4 on that, uh, on that bore. Um, <clears throat> now if I go to one that I haven't bored, Hang on, we're getting set up here. Okay, let's get you set up there. Um, five and eight tenths. Uh, that I, I I gotta get this needle all the way around back to two. So I was planning on just five, but now I'm taking seven and a half probably. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, like I say, silver lights didn't even put all the pistons in the box. Sealed power. We're probably not going to be able to see this, but I just want to show you. It's very small writing. 3 inch, 808, and 3 quarters, right up there. And they tell you you got to measure uh, 2 inch, 640 down from the top. And I measured these pistons every which way. Um, and they're just, for some reason, these pistons are now at the finished bore. They are not, 
they left no room for for uh, piston to wall clearance. So I have number one fit, and I, and I marked that number one. Uh, they are they do vary quite a bit. I have my 3,000 feeler gauge here. I'm going to show you how I fit that. Okay, guys, this is like I say the number one piston, 3,000 feeler gauge. That piston is going to get bound in there. That's very tight. It's, it's, it's stuck in there, okay? That's how we should, that's how we should feel. Um, uh, one thousandths and two tenths to one thousandths and three tenths is this, the, the oil clearance they want. It's kind of tight. Now I marked that number one because it works just right. Now I'm going to show you another piston from the same box. Okay, we're going to throw this guy in there. Look at that. That just falls right in there and the 3000 comes right out. So we've got to, that's a, I mean that would be fine, but we're out of spec already on that and that should not be that loose on the 3000s. So that's going to go into the next hole. I still have finish work to do, that won't even go in yet. But I'm going to clean up all of the bores and then um, every piston has to be hand fit. And sadly, some guys are just going to shoot for the 3 inch 810 and you'd have a super tight motor and you'd melt the pistons and overheat the engine if you did it like that. So you have to take every piston out of the box, measure it, and mate it to its actual cylinder hole. So I've got a lot of honing to do. I'm not going to bore you with that. You've seen me hone a hundred times. But I just wanted to give you some numbers and let you know uh, if your engine builder isn't fitting pistons like this, or he's not showing you the process, or he's not showing you the cross hatch when he's finished, you maybe want to look for somebody else. But um, number one is finished. I just got to, I got to do a plateau hone and then a ball hone on that. But the size itself is finished. I got to do that for the rest of the five. Okay, guys. I just uh, set up. I put a new set of stones in there <clears throat> after so many. Uh, the cylinders they start to get tapered and stuff and we don't we don't want a tapered cylinder so we're going to put the oil on and we're going to give it a few strokes and you see the process again Okay, we'll check the size and uh, it's basically just hone it, check the size and keep fitting the pistons and uh, I'll be back with you uh, when we do the next step. Okay guys, uh, back on the uh, honing of the 258. Okay, there's my fine stones. I roughed in all the cylinders with the rough stones and I did number two, got that piston fit number three I'm working on right now and I'm going to try and give you a shot there uh, I picked out number three piston already and tested it and measured and we're just going to drop that guy in there I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this I hope so um, but that is it's hard to explain but that's the piston fit you want that uh, guy should just glide up and down, there shouldn't be any movement. Um, it, it, it should fit in there perfectly. Um, we have right now um, one, one thousandths and two tenths, you know, that's uh, .0012 uh, for clearance on both sides. So the pistons are different enough where I have to test everyone in the hole. Uh, so number one is dedicated to number one, number two to two, and um, uh, there is a difference a little bit in the uh, in the pistons, and and I told you that when we were starting. So this is why you have to do every single hole to its piston. Um, there's there's really no other way to do it. 
Uh, the hole looks a little crazy right now just coming off those stones but we'll plateau finish it and we will put a cross hatch in there I have the ball hone right there that's a brand new one so I'm kinda every now and again I'm soaking it in oil that's a brand new ball hone so it's a it's a little aggressive but um, I'm soaking it in oil get it uh, get it well soaked before we uh, before we do the cross hatch so number one is done number two is done number three is done and we'll just keep on down the line and uh, I'll show you the cross hatch when it's done and then we'll put a little chamfer on top there so the pistons go in easy and uh, we'll get to washing this guy pretty soon okay guys got the honing done on the 258 shining the light on there I think you can see the quality of the cross hatch that'll hold oil perfectly there's all the cylinders you can see a little chamfer I put on the top to ease the piston installation there's number one I got a rag in the way um, beautiful cross hatch on there uh, after the hone we gave it the plateau finish like I always do and then uh, put the cross hatch in so this is ready to come out machine work is completely done on this engine now and uh, this is ready to be washed and we'll get into assembly next now one thing I want to show you uh, if I can get the camera over here here are my finished dimensions on this batch of pistons uh, okay three inch eight twelve and three tenths on number one uh, three inch eight twelve and one tenth uh, and you can see let's see the pistons are all numbered this is just how they came out of the box there was more than a, a half thou difference in them uh, number three eight eleven and nine tenths number four you could see was uh, I got a real small piston and number five uh, uh, you know a, a small one again and then look at number six is the same as number four so those are my bores and they fit the pistons perfectly this is why you have to try every single piston these days uh, uh, the the quality they just did they aren't holding it anymore so if you put number one in number four your oil clearance is going to suffer so that's I just want to show you guys what I had to do as far as the honing uh, this is why you know you can't hone super close to size because you could get yourself in trouble so uh, 258 is gonna come out of there now I've got to get an engine stand over here and the engine hoist and stuff and get it out and, and let it drain for a while and um, I don't know if I have time today I got a whole bunch of stuff to wash uh, four different engines and uh, I don't know if I'll get to that today but uh, we'll get this out of here and on the stand and uh, I'll be right back with you okay guys get a little crowded by the door here I got a bunch of engines that got to be washed this one is Scott's uh, it's collecting some of the uh, honing oil that's coming off it so I got it bagged it's our Willys Americar engine there I've got another 258 right here and I've got the associated heads that go with everything uh, that's just a, a standard head this is the head to the Willys 442 Americar engine and I think if you look here you can see the one on the the one right here this is getting the Chevy valves in it again another Chevy valve conversion you can maybe see the size compared to the factory that Scott's right there try and get them both in there intake and exhaust are quite large with the Chevy valves and it really breathes nice okay and let's see if I can get this guy over Hang in there. Okay, I think you can see. Okay, on a factory head, uh, you have these bosses sticking up, and the the guides. Well, it's just cast iron. The valves run in cast iron, and. 
if they're bad you gotta bore through and put a guide in there these were very good okay now on this one uh, everything is heavy when you're working one-handed uh, hang in there okay now this one you see I machined all those all these stumps down and I put in new valve guides okay these are actual uh, replacement valve guides remember in here the valve guide is your cast iron okay so these are very short they're sticking up just a little bit uh, I haven't picked the cam yet I'm not sure what we're gonna run for a cam in this guy but um, these tiny little valve guides that are sticking up just that little bit won't be in the way of any we could put a real high lift cam in there if we want we could do whatever we want without those stumps in there so I'm going to give you a view of both of them at once. So there's a lot of work if you want to put a high lift cam or uh, Chevy valves in there. There's a lot of, lot of work that goes into them. So uh, obviously those mo motors are much more expensive than a standard rebuild. But uh, worth it if you're looking for some performance. So uh, when I get a free minute, I've got to get out everything outside move around to the back. To the washer and I'll probably wash that F head down it's pretty grimy and greasy I'll probably clean that up and uh, there, there's a lot of engine cleaning to do so I'll get to that soon hey guys I'm not gonna get to the uh, engine washing today uh, we're, we're in a bad heat wave here and I lost a bunch of chickens last night due to heat so I'm gonna go over in the chicken coop and get that set up with some uh, I'm gonna mist them with water and get a couple fans in there to keep them going through the night so uh, gotta take care of that today but I'll be back uh, assembling engines pretty soon thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next video